good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to participate in this session. I'm going to talk about impacts, long-term impacts of PrEP, specifically uh, about toxicity and resistance. Here are my disclosures. The agenda for my presentation is first uh, to talk about toxicity of available drugs for PrEP, then uh, see whether we can reduce toxicity with other drugs, and then talk about risk of resistance to PrEP. Is it high? Can we, can we reduce it? First, safety and uh, of available drugs for PrEP. The first one the, for all PrEP, as you know, is the FTC TDF, the Truada, which has shown low toxicity in clinical trials. We know that it can be decreased in bone mineral density around 1%. But no increased fractures observed. And also, we, we know that they can decrease the GFR, which usually is reversible. Uh, it's true that uh, probably there is no enough of time in these clinical trials to detect uh, long term toxicities. But on the other hand, we have uh, quite a lot of experience with people with HIV around uh, treatment with, with these drugs. And also, it is possible to reduce doses of these drugs with on-demand PrEP. And it's true that PrEP is not forever. Usually, you can be on PrEP for a long period, but not for the whole life. And there is another PrEP option available, uh, in not in Europe, not yet in Europe, because the is not yet approved by the European Medicine Agency, which is the uh, FTC TAF, which is not inferior to FTC TDF for HIV prevention, as has been shown in the Discover study. But efficacy evidence is only in MSM and transgender women, and there are no studies with on-demand regime. This is the a presentation of the last results of the Discover study in the last Troy conference, which is also the week 96. And I will not spend much time on that. Just this is the overall site is uh, summary. Uh, we can see that in both arms, uh, there were similar adverse events. And we look at the bone. Uh, we see that the TAF, as we, we knew, the FTC TAF, uh, it's the bone safety. Uh, it's uh, more, uh, it's, it's higher with the FTC TAF rather than the uh, FTC TDF. The same with uh, regarding the renal safety, uh, better with the uh, FTC TAF, as we knew. And when we look at the lipids, we see that uh, in this case, the FTC TDF uh, can decrease the lipids uh, more than the the FTC TAF. When we look at the fasting glucose, no differences, and the same for the total cholesterol HDL ratio. Uh, also, we, the, the, we don't see differences between both. When we look at the body weight, we know that with the TAF, uh, there can be an increase of weight in, in this study, it was 1.7 kilos, uh, the median body weight increase, and it's the difference is statistically significant with the TDF-FTC. And uh, let's see other drugs. And recently, the European Medicine Agency has adopted a positive opinion for the lapivirin vaginal ring. This is based on the studies, this uh, open label studies of uh, <coughs> voice and ring. It's the HOPE and RIM studies showing an estimated efficacy of 54%. And with a with a good uh, safety profile, the, the most common side effects are urinary tract, in, tract infection or vaginal discharge or pruritus or pelvic uh, low abdominal pain, but we know that the, there is a really low systemic uptake in the consortium. Uh, this, uh, the recommendation for the European Medicines Agency is exclusively for markets outside the European Union. And another advantage of this is the multipurpose technology. We can add a contraceptive for this vaginal ring, which could make more appealing for women, for some women. And other drugs, the, the same, the, the, the vaginal ring, 
There are studies with rectal dapiverin gel, it's a study in the N026. Do, we don't have results yet, but based on the vaginal ring gel and ring studies, the rectal formulation of dapiverin is expected to be also safe. Now let's go to another uh, drug, another formulation. Uh, we, we saw the results of the HPTN OA3 in the last uh, AIDS conference in July. And it's, uh, yeah, I'm sure that my colleague, uh, Dr. Landovitz, will talk much, um, in much more deeply than me in the next presentation. But just to remember that this study in one with uh, around 4,500 participants, and half of them received the capotegravid long-acting injectable every two months, and the rest uh, oral prep with PDF-FTC. Uh, regarding the injection uh, adverse events, the most common, as we, we would expect, is the injection site reaction, which occur in 80% of uh, capotegravid participants, but only 2.2% discontinued the injectable due to this injection related adverse event. Uh, I'm not going to spend much time on that. I'm sure that uh, Landovitz will do it, uh, Dr. Landovitz, but just to show that regarding grade two adverse events, some differences regarding the, the kidney or, and in favor of, of cabotegravir. And uh, regarding grade three and plus uh, adverse events, no differences. Uh, looking at the weight, also an increase of weight with cabotegravir, or a median of 1.3 kilos, which was statistically significant a difference with the ten of the FTC group. But we look at the HPT in 077, we didn't observe these differences on increase of weight. So uh, do we have new drugs for PrEP on the horizon, which could have less toxicity. But there is a new drug, interesting drug. It's a new transcriptase translocation inhibitor. It's the Islatravir, which could be uh, used as an implant for 12 months using the same technology as the next plan, which is uh, contraceptive, or uh, by a monthly oral dose also for, for PrEP. We have some data on safety of this new drug. This is a phase one. Uh, clinical trial with healthy volunteers, 16. Uh, some of them received the Slatravil by an implant and other the placebo for placebo. And the results as, uh, regarding safety are this, uh, as we could expect uh, with like with other implants, the hematoma and pain were, were common, very frequent. But uh, when we look at the, the general safety regarding vital signs, ECG and safety laboratory studies, no clinically significant differences between Islatravir and placebo were observed. So also uh, we could expect uh, a safe option for breath. Other options, uh, for instance, the uh, vaginal uh, films containing HIV and herpes virus monoclonal antibodies. This study was presented in the last conference also, and it was shown that this option was safe and well tolerated and also could be used as a multipurpose technology for HIV and, and other STIs and also as a contraceptive. And also there are studies on the pivoting vaginal film, studies the FAME O2B, and also showing a, a good uh, safety profile. And uh, last, talking about uh, new options for PrEP, uh, but specifically on safety, because I know that the next presentation is about new options. So the broadly neutralizing antibodies, and specifically these uh, AMP studies, uh, uh, implemented this, the HHVTN704 implemented on 2,700 MSM women. They received this BRCO1 plus uh, antibody or the placebo, and results not are not yet presented, but no toxicity expected. Uh, it's, it's true that there is concern about development of antibodies against them and loss of efficacy, and also concern about the emergence of resistance. But we'll see, we'll have to see. And this is the study implemented uh, among women, the HPTN 703, still waiting for results. So let's go to the resistance uh, issue. And risk of resistance to PrEP, is it that high? 
Well, evidence suggests that selection for HIV drug resistance with PrEP is infrequent and most likely to occur when PrEP is used during uh, uh, undiagnosed acute HIV infection. Breakthrough infections during PrEP use with high adherence are possible, but appear to be rare, really rare. This, in this article, uh, the author look at the risk of resistance to PrEP and the, one of the conclusions is that the resistance to TDF or FTC is infrequently selected by PrEP if started before HIV infection has occurred. But it's much more common when uh, started during uh, undiagnosed a acute infection. And in this table, you can see that the uh, if the infection occurs after the enrollment, the incidence of resistance is low and it's mainly to the FTC, you can see to 6%. But when the uh, prep, when the acute infection occurs at enrollment, then this uh, resistance is much more frequent and can be up to 41%. And we have also data from the Discover study. Uh, there were 23 uh, zero conversions in the study so far. And uh, in five of these zero conversions, there was uh, this mutation, the M1A4V, but in four, uh, four were suspect baseline infections and one had low drug levels by DBS. This is... Uh, a study presented by Don Colby in the last great conference also. Uh, they have a lot of experience with PrEP at the Thai Red Cross in Bangkok. They have around 3,000 PrEP users and they do a qualitative, a pool qualitative HIV RNA test, which can detect most but not all acute uh, HIV infections prior to starting PrEP. And they have observed that the risk of development uh, increases with time on PrEP. And it would be low if uh, this time of prep is less than 15 days, but high if it's more than four weeks. The most common, as we know, is the M184. And the, they say that there is a low risk for resistance to TDF when prep is taken for less than five weeks. So can we reduce this risk of resistance to prep? Well, we could use drugs with higher genetic barrier or novel formulations of PrEP which can facilitate adherence, like cabotegravir that could be expected to be protective against the strains of HIV that are resistant to TDF and FTC because it does not target the same HIV enzymes. But if we look back again to the HPTN083 study, uh, we see that there were five cell conversions about cabotegravir participants who receive continuous and on-time cabotegravir injections. Mm, the investigators don't know very well why. They say that per-infection drug concentrations and resistant profiles need to be further explored. So can we reduce it? Well, because long-acting cabotegravir has a long life, half-life, People who discontinue PrEP could have a long period along the pharmacokinetic kinetic tail with low drug levels, which might potentially increase the selection of resistance to this, to this drug. That's why after discontinuation of, of, of PrEP with cabotegravir, if risk of infection persists, oral PrEP with FTC TDF or FTC TAF should be recommended for one year. And regarding vaginal rings containing dapivirin, there was no detected uh, dapivirin-specific resistant mutations among these women who participated in these studies. And it's possibly because that the low plasma concentrations of dapivirin, which achieves high local tissue concentrations, might reduce selection pressure for drug resistance after the HIV acquisition. And like cabotegravir, the pivotin is suspected to be active also against strains with TDF or FTC resistance. This is what uh, uh, Don Colby and their colleagues at the Bangkok uh, Red Cross do. If uh, the, the PrEP client has had any high risk behavior within the previous 30 days, 
they start uh, with three drugs, like a post-exposure prophylaxis for four weeks. And after four weeks, if the HIV uh, screening is negative, then PrEP is prescribed. And they say that since then, since uh, early 2018, no need cases of HIV infections in PrEP initiators have been detected. And uh, some conclusions. Uh, we know that PrEP may select for drug-resistant HIV, but to date, incidence of resistance has been low, very low, and the greatest risk for persons with unrecognized recent infection who initiated PrEP the FTC resistance more likely to emerge than TDF resistance, although we know that some cases of dual resistance has been reported and the prolonged sale of long acting formulations might facilitate the emergence of resistance in persons infected after stopping PrEP. The prevalence of drug resistant HIV strains needs to be monitored as PrEP is a scale up. And lastly, that the benefit of preventing HIV infections with uh, PrEP far outweighs the risk of drug resistant infection, as long as PrEP is not started in persons with undiagnosed HIV infection. And that's all. Thank you very much, you, and uh, I'll be here for questions. Thank you.